we've all written code like this, maybe when we were a starting developer, or maybe even recently by proxy by approving a PR because we've realized that all code is shit and none of it matters in the long term anyways. But a part of us still wants to do better, so let's look at a few ways how we can clean this code up all relating to how it handles if conditions. One obvious reason how this code is dirty is the fact that its core intent of updating the person's experience and age is buried deep within some if conditions. One crystal clear cleanup that we can do is that we can combine the first two if conditions into a single if condition with the logical AND. You can do this with any two nested if conditions as long as they don't have code outside of the if block and don't have matching else conditions. Now this is not true for the other two if conditions as they do have else blocks, so we will stop our logical combination here. Let's focus in on the function's behavior outside of this main if condition. Now there are no statements outside of this if block which means that this function will pretty much execute nothing and return. Well, we can code that up as a separate if condition. We can invert this condition such that button is not equal to 1 or if there is not a person and do a simple return. This kind of returning from a function in case of any excluded conditions is known as an early return. And overall, this pattern of excluding certain conditions upfront within a function body is called a guard clause. The other common guard clause is where you throw an exception, and we can see that in our next if condition. If the person's age is equal to null, then we simply throw a new error. We can take this condition and move it at the root level so we don't need to have the next if else block. And the next if else block follows the same button, that is, if the person's experience is equal to null, we simply throw an error, and we can repeat the same process that we did for person.age. That is, if the person.experience is equal to null, we simply throw an error up front within the function body. And this gives us a neat, dedented function body, where the purpose of the function is much easier to understand than it was before. Now as a final thought, let's talk about how you have to invert the conditions for your guard clauses. In most cases, inverting a condition is quite easy. For example, if you are checking for person.age not equal to null, it's a simple matter of replacing it with person.age equals to null. And the same is true for other things, for example, button equal to 1 becomes button not equal to 1. And if you are checking for a truthy value called person, then it becomes simply not person. However, it's a bit more involved when you have a combination of conditions, for example, button equals to 1 and person. In this particular case, you can simply invert the individual member conditions. For example, this becomes button not equal to 1 and this becomes not person. And all the combinators get inverted as well. That is, all the ands would turn into ors, and if we had any ors, we would turn them to ands. And if you are curious, this is something that comes from De Morgan's law, and even if you're not going to be using guard clauses, just knowing about this particular De Morgan law is going to save you a ton of mental gymnastics when working with Boolean conditions. And this is saying the same thing that we just demonstrated, that is, invert the individual members and turn an or into an and, and an and into an or. And that's all for this lesson, leave a comment if you would like to see more clean code tips, smash that like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.